thank you for your interest in the general surgery residency program here at Indiana University uh, on our main campus here in Indianapolis. My name is Matt Ritter and I'm the program director for general surgery and over the next few minutes I'm going to give you an overview of what uh, your training would be like if you came and joined us. First, if you've never been to Indianapolis or to Indiana, there's a lot to do. Uh, Indianapolis is a large city of uh, just under a million. Uh, most of you have probably heard of the Indy 500. We have a, a bustling and quickly growing food scene as well as a, a great sports venue. We've uh, hosted the Super Bowl, frequently host the NCAA tournaments, and uh, have a lot of fun doing that. A little bit about me, uh, prior to coming to Indiana in 2020, I was active duty military uh, for a long time, serving as program director at Walter Reed National Military Medical Center uh, in Bethesda, Maryland. Uh, I like skiing and lots of other outdoor activities. Um, this slide is my family, my older daughter, my son, and my wife. Uh, my daughter just graduated from James Madison last year. Other program leadership uh, listed here, uh, we have a, a full cast of leaders, most of whom you'll meet uh, during the interview process. And then our chair, Dr. Bill Moria, who uh, was lead author on uh, the first and second trials uh, that has really uh, examined closely the issues of, of wellness and surgical education. I throw our mission statement up here, not necessarily for you to read, but just to understand where we're coming from. We really value surgical education at IU, uh, and we pride ourselves on being a, a premier program for evidence-based uh, innovation to produce graduates, not only to be surgeon scientists and scholars, but uh, general surgeons for Indiana and uh, the rest of the country. A little overview of what I'll cover today. Touch a bit about of our philosophy in the department as well as uh, for education. Some of the educational opportunities, of course, resources, and um, what you can expect if you train here in terms of uh, experience clinically as well as uh, from a board standpoint. So this is kind of how we think about our role as residency program leaders. So it's our job to put together a program for you that has all the opportunities you could possibly want or need to become an effective surgeon across the spectrum of general surgery and to really create and foster an environment uh, that is conducive to learning. We'll talk more about that in a second. What your job is, is to really take full advantage of these educational opportunities. Uh, as you'll see, we have uh, no shortage of opportunities in our program, uh, and I think you'll enjoy uh, experiencing um, all of them. And I, we want you to contribute to the positive learning environment, uh, being both leaders and teachers to those who follow. One of my favorite leadership books and one of the concepts we really try to foster in the program is this concept of radical candor. Hopefully some of you have read this book by uh, Kim Scott. But the, the, the core of this is the combination of caring personally about individuals as well as challenging them directly. And that combination of caring personally and challenging directly really leads to the most uh, foundational growth. You can see a, a little uh, graphic I've lifted from the text here that talks about the different ways these axes can fall, but we really focus on staying in this uh, right upper quadrant uh, as our target for, for leadership and education in our department. Uh, the clinical education opportunities are, are very vast here. Um, we have seven, currently seven, different uh, clinical sites we rotate at. On the left of the screen here, you see uh, IU Health Sites, so Methodist Hospital, University Hospital, Riley, uh, IU West, and IU North. We also have a, a regional referral VA hospital on campus, and then Eskenazi Health is our uh, community hospital network, uh, and um, we have the main hospital of that network on campus as well. As interns, you'll go to five of these seven hospitals, but the program incorporates all the hospitals. Some additional technical, or sorry, technical, some additional resident professional development programs. Uh, we have a robust technical skills program in our department run surgical skills uh, simulation center. We do team based skills in combination with uh, emergency medicine, primarily around trauma. We actually have a full time sports psychologist on faculty, and we have a mental skills curriculum to help give you tools to deal with stress in and out of the operating room when you have to perform your best when things are, are falling down around you. 
We teach you how to be teachers. Um, we teach you how to be researchers for those who uh, choose that additional uh, professional de development time. Uh, and then focus some on a business curriculum as well as uh, life skills. This is uh, our uh, surgical skills curriculum. Uh, we do a, a vast curriculum all the way from core uh, skills that you'll develop as a PGY-1, you see some listed here, up to full procedural uh, simulation uh, in uh, animate and inanimate tissue models as well as virtual reality. Here's some clips on the vast array of different uh, teaching sessions we have in our department run skills center. Um, these are mostly uh, mannequin based uh, simulations. Uh, this is in our larger simulation facility where we do our team training. Uh, we have uh, two robotic consoles and a patient cart on site as well as uh, frequent uh, visits from intuitive for larger courses for residents on a weekly basis. We have a robust and quickly expanding ultrasound curriculum as well. Some national courses that we deliver, you see here, both those funded by the American College of Surgeons, ATLS, ASSET, ATOM, uh, and uh, ultrasound courses, as well as fundamentals courses, which are requirements for uh, board certification uh, that were developed uh, by SAGES. We are test sites for all of these, so you don't need to travel uh, to get any of these certifications under your belt. For conferences, we have protected time on Wednesday morning, similar to many programs, uh, starting with M&M and Grand Rounds, followed by a longitudinal uh, education curriculum based on the um, SCORE outline, uh, Surgical Council and Resident Education. This is the same outline that the board exams are uh, blueprinted off of, as well as in training exams. Uh, so focuses on the, the core patient care medical knowledge components of training. In addition to that, there are additional protected time uh, meetings and conferences around education at different hospitals, and you see some of these above me here. Um, these each have a different focus based on the rotations at those hospitals, but there's a robust and uh, at least weekly um, uh, allocation for protected time for these type of traditional conferences. Uh, research opportunities, um, half to three quarters of our residents will opt to do two professional development years. There are many in-house research opportunities and those opportunities are growing rapidly. Dr. Markle did a separate recording uh, focused specifically on uh, research, so please check that out. This is a quick overview of some of the um, uh, opportunities internally. External opportunities are also available, and then the department will uh, not only fund your salary during this time, but uh, fund um, you to acquire a master's degree, and these are examples here of some of the more common master's degrees that residents in their professional development time pursue. Other types of resident engagement best practices uh, that we've incorporated at IU are, are listed here. I won't read all of these, but many of these are, are, are taken directly from uh, and included in best practice guides that are distributed nationally. I will highlight uh, that we have a robust resident council that helps give input and guidance on resident issues to uh, program leadership. Uh, we have a, a great new parental support policy uh, and really encourage across the board resident involvement in the leadership of the program. So some more uh, nitty gritty numbers, will I get to operate? These are some numbers uh, from the last several years uh, showing uh, resident performance on cases. I have a slide later that will show how this compares to uh, ACGME requirements. This is our last year's graduates um, and you see those numbers are consistent and then you see the uh, requirements to the side. So we are significantly exceeding all the requirements uh, to give you a robust across the board experience. This is uh, one slide that kind of breaks down what we call the different defined categories from an ACGME standpoint. So this is skin, soft tissue, head and neck, elementary track, et cetera. This is meant just to show how balanced our program is. We have uh, great numbers across the board without any real significant uh, area of weakness in terms of operative experience. 
Will you pass your boards when you're done? Here's uh, some data showing our QE, which is the written uh, board exam, and this, uh, this should be CE, uh, our uh, certifying exam, that's the oral exams. Uh, and we have a, a fantastic track record of performance on those. This slide shows us compared with some of our uh, peer institutions nationally, and this is not meant to say we're better or worse than any of these, but it just shows you the variability of very well-known institutions uh, and very uh, infrequently do people maintain a 100% uh, board pass rate for extended periods of time. Uh, so we're very competitive, um, likely with uh, all the institutions that you're considering. What do our graduates do? Here's a list of um, what last year's graduates did. As you see, uh, eight of the ten went into fellowship, two into practice, uh, and you can see those listed here. If we project that over a larger uh, area, and uh, I will hopefully uh, move my face here. Um, you see this is over the last decade or so, the different fellowships uh, or uh, practice opportunities uh, people have gone into. And if we focus more on the last few years, this is uh, 2020 to 2024 uh, fellowship and practice uh, choices for graduates. So you see been successful across the board, pediatric surgery, surgical oncology, transplant surgery, as well as MIS and um, other um, training programs. So what can you expect as you roll into interview day? Um, you'll see here structured interviews with two rooms of general surgery faculty. All the associate program directors, Dr. McDowell, Dr. Mong, Dr. Terrace, uh, they may or may not have an, another faculty with them in the room. And then each of you will meet with me one-on-one -on -one, um, to, uh, to chat and uh, definitely give you time to discuss there. We also have some unstructured and discussion Q&A options for you. Uh, you will meet with at least one pair of general surgery residents. You'll meet with Dr. Troy Markle, who's our vice chair of research. And then there's also an opportunity to have a one-on-one -on -one time with the program coordinators, uh, Mimi, uh, Stacy, uh, to just ask them questions. The, the program coordinator time is optional. Everyone will have at least one full break uh, during the day as well. So thank you again for your interest in our program. We really look forward uh, to meeting you. I want you all to know as well that uh, if you were invited for an interview, it means based on our very extensive holistic review process, you are already very well aligned with uh, what we value as an institution. Um, and uh, we have good confidence that you have the knowledge, skills, and attitudes required to be successful in our program. So thank you again. Look forward to talking to you more. Uh, and uh, have a great day. Hi, welcome to IU General Surgery. I'm so glad you're able to join us for interviews. I hope that this video will help you understand a little bit about the highlights of our clinical environment here at IU. Uh, we have a breadth of clinical experiences, and I'm only going to touch on a few of them. As I stated, uh, my name is Jennifer Choi. I actually trained in this program, so I have seen this institution uh, grow uh, its clinical programs, grow in its faculty size, grow in its residency size but really maintain the heart of who we are. And that is a really caring and generous group of surgeons who really want to train a great generation of clinical residents. So thank you so much for being here. I hope that this video will help you better understand our institution. Now I am only gonna to get to go through a few highlights. I won't touch on every institution that you will rotate at, but rest assured that each institution will add value to your training. First, I want to talk about Eskenazi. So Eskenazi is our Marion County Hospital. It is a facility that is very important uh, to the county. It is a level one trauma center. We have 1,600 trauma admissions each year, and an unusual number of those are actually penetrating trauma. So while as a resident, this is really good news. That means you'll get great operative experience. It also means that there are issues of violence in the city. Now, I would consider Indianapolis a very safe city, uh, but again, there are pockets of violence in different places. We do have a program called Prescription for Hope. And this is a really important program that our surgeons are very engaged in to help our trauma patients recover from their traumatic injuries, 
reintegrate into society, navigate employment, uh, the justice system, uh, and other social services in an effort to help prevent uh, traumatic injury recidivism. We've had dramatic decreases in our, our re-injury rate from up to 30% at its height to now 4%. And so this program has been really important with that. Again, as a surgeon, the operative trauma is exciting, but as we all know, violence is an increasing problem in our society, and I'm really happy that we're involved in helping find solutions to that problem. Right down the street from Eskenazi is our VA Medical Center. Now the VA I wanna highlight because it's not always the place where you might think of cutting edge surgery, but the VA is really where our robotics program really got its start. So our robotics and general surgery are throughout all of our facilities. We have general surgeons teaching and doing robotics every, every single day, uh, all a whole variety of patients. But again, the VA was really among the first. And so I wanna give them huge kudos uh, for stepping out into, into this space uh, early uh, in the robotics era. Next is University Hospital. University Hospital is a quaternary care hospital. Now, admittedly, in the future, we're going to put our University Hospital combined with our Methodist Hospital. That will happen during the time that you are training here. But University Hospital by itself really focuses on cancer care as well as transplant. Those are two big foci of uh, of clinical care that we have. We also do all the other kinds of general surgery here, including hernia and foregut, many other types of operations. Uh, but I do want to highlight cancer care. Uh, most people don't think of IU potentially as being a pancreatic cancer or pancreatic surgery mecca, uh, but you will find that we do more pancreatic surgery here than any other institution in the United States. As a resident, this is really good for you. Again, really great uh, operative experience. And also uh, there's only one fellow, so not a lot of competition for cases. Methodist Hospital, as I mentioned, will eventually combine with University Hospital. Methodist is another level one trauma center. It's actually only about a mile from Eskenazi Hospital, but this is a statewide level one trauma center. They do take care of many patients from the Indianapolis area, but also get referrals from around the state. Our level one trauma center at Methodist also cares for our IndyCar drivers. So come the month of May, uh, you'll notice a bit of a change in some of the clientele that we have at Methodist Hospital. Uh, we are a statewide referral center for acute care surgery. So again, many... Uh, Patients from all around the state seek care at Methodist Hospital, where we again provide a breadth of care uh, for all of those patients and have uh, a really robust surgery critical care service to also assist in that care. So Methodist Hospital is busy day and night. Uh, they are operating day and night. Uh, great experience, again, from the resident perspective, from a clinical work standpoint, as well as from a teaching standpoint. Riley Children's Hospital. So Riley is near and dear to my heart. This has been a really important piece. Uh, when I was a trainee, our chair was uh, a pediatric surgeon. And again, uh, Riley Hospital has grown and developed over time. They are a top 10 U.S. News uh, Children's Hospital. Uh, so they have been um, they have been recognized for their excellence in care uh, in all aspects of care of the pediatric patient. There are many uh, pediatric hospitals that have difficulties uh, having a full spectrum of index cases for pediatric surgery. And again, Riley does not have any shortage of that. And you will see uh, many of those things that you thought you'd ever only read about, uh, but you'll see them almost every day at Riley. So again, a great opportunity to experience the clinical care given to uh, our children of Indiana at Riley Children's Health. The last place I'm gonna focus on and the last place I'm gonna highlight is Moy Teaching and Referral Hospital. So this is a global health experience in El Direct, Kenya. IU actually leads an organization called AMPATH, uh, which is an organization that has developed partnerships all over the United States to bring excellent care and even global health research to, our, uh, to the global health community. We're currently based in El Direct, Kenya with the intent of opening a few more sites for AMPATH over the next several years. Uh, IU does have a surgeon present at Moy University at all times, 
which enables us to have an ACGME accredited rotation at Moy uh, for our residents to take part in. Uh, as you know, this is not a really common experience, but this is a great opportunity for any of you who are interested in the global health space or, or just educating yourself about global surgery. I think this is extremely important. And again, something as a resident I was able to take advantage of. And so one that I really encourage any of you to take advantage of if at all possible. So that's a really short tour. I, I personally work at IU Health North. Uh, we do our MIS and bariatric surgery there. IU Health West is a community general surgery environment. And again, I think that is an extremely important addition to our program. Our, our residents have been there for many years and really find that a valuable operative experience. I think the combination of all of our clinical experiences make our program uniquely situated to prepare you to go into general surgery straight out of residency or to enter a fellowship of whichever type you want. So I think, again, hopefully you'll see that IU is a, a great program. We really uh, encourage your, your growth really from an early stage. And uh, again, I hope you've gotten a glimpse of the clinical experiences at IU uh, through this presentation. Thank you so much. Hi, I'm Dimitris Stefanidis, Vice Chair of Education for the Department and will present to you what is unique about the education culture of our program. The Surgical Training Program at IU has developed an exceptional culture in education through the untiring efforts of its past chair, Gary Dunnington, and the dynamism of our current chair, Carl Billimoria. Our education mission is to promote an effective, respectful and innovative teaching environment for diverse group of students, residents, fellows and faculty. Here is how we achieve this mission. We monitor and assess our education culture on an ongoing basis as is shown in this education dashboard and make changes as necessary to keep driving it forward. We ensure our faculty have a passion for education during the hiring process. We provide special training to our faculty for how to be great teachers for our learners. Here you can see the agenda for surgical educator series we are offering to our faculty on an annual basis. In my role as Vice Chair of Education, I regularly review the teaching evaluations of our faculty and share them with our faculty including feedback when there is room for improvement. We use these evaluations to give teaching awards to our faculty annually. We have so many great teachers in this department that I am truly humbled every time I review their evaluations and have a really hard time who to pick for these awards. Our program provides our residents an unparalleled clinical training experience in a variety of hospital settings taking care of a diverse patient population, as you heard in Dr. Choi's presentation, but we also offer you a state-of-the-art training experience. We have a structured proficiency-based skills curriculum for the development of basic and advanced surgical skills in open, laparoscopic, endoscopic and robotic surgery. In a state-of-the-art simulation center, that houses multiple simulators and is accredited by the American College of Surgeons. We further use animal and cadaveric models to increase the fidelity of training experiences our residents get. These are very popular. We offer resident Olympics that encourage healthy competition among our trainees. We emphasize professional development of our residents, offering them a structured residence as teachers curriculum, as well as leadership training for more senior residents. The result is that we have multiple residents being recognized and awarded as excellent teachers by our medical school class, which is also a significant contributor to our clerkship being recognized as the best in the school of medicine for numerous years. An important component of our education culture is the incessant efforts to innovate and be at the cutting edge of 
educational offerings to our trainees as well as educational research. We are not content with the status quo. We want to develop curricula that lead the way in surgical education and disseminate to other programs to adapt. There are multiple examples to reference here. We are developing a competence-based training model for our residency program. For those not very familiar with this type of training, it is a model that emphasizes the verification that a learner has achieved preset levels of performance rather than making the assumption that they have before they can advance to the next level. This paradigm matches learning objectives with relevant assessments and assures appropriate skill acquisition, is tailored to individual trainee needs and minimizes performance variability at the end of training. Along those lines, we have developed innovative skills curricula that help you accelerate skill acquisition in procedures such as laparoscopic cholecystectomy, and we are currently expanding this to other procedures. We have previously shown that such curricula promote uniform skill acquisition, as you can see in the graph. We're offering our trainees an innovative state-of-the-art mental skills curriculum that helps you develop cognitive strategies to control stress and performance anxiety and optimize your performance in surgery. Such strategies include mental imagery, goal setting, attention management, and other techniques. This curriculum received an innovation award by the Association for Surgical Education. In partnership with our AMPATH program at Moy University in Kenya, we have developed a low-cost simulator that can be used for training in open appendectomy in low-income countries and beyond. Finally, the work Dr. Billy Mora has done, such as the first trial, has helped shape national policies regarding resident work hours, and the currently ongoing second trial is leveraging quality improvement approaches to reduce physician burnout and mistreatment. These and other innovations can only happen through the work of a dedicated team that focuses on state-of-the-art education research. This is the IU RISE team that has the reputation for being one of the best education research training programs in the country. IU RISE has had 10 research fellows since its inception, of which almost all have been from our residency program. Our fellowship is accredited by the American College of Surgeons. As our resident, you will have the opportunity to join this team if you have an interest in educational research. I would like to close by highlighting the leadership our department has provided to surgical education nationally. Our past chair, Gary Dunnington, has been a world-renowned surgeon educator and past president of the Association for Surgical Education. He is credited for the development of the BID method for intraoperative teaching that is used widely in surgery and was instrumental in starting simple, the skill evaluation app that is used across numerous U.S. residency programs. Our current chair, Dr. Billy Moria, is a renowned health services researcher and past president of the Association of Academic Surgeons. He is leading the Indiana University Surgical Outcomes and Quality Improvement Center, SOCIC, and numerous efforts to impact national policy in the area of resident and faculty wellness with a number of trials. Our program director, Dr. Matt Ritter, is doing important work in video-based technical performance assessment for the Society of American Gastrointestinal Endoscopic Surgeons, SAGES who is behind the development of the Fundamentals for Laparoscopic Surgery, FLS, that most of you are probably familiar with. Our past residency program director and current designated institutional official, DIO, Dr. Jennifer Choi, is president-elect of the Association of Program Directors in Surgery that oversees residency training in this country. Our Director of Education and Prior Residency Coordinator, Brianne Nickel, is immediate past president of the Association for Residency Administrators in Surgery. And finally, myself, 
I'm immediate past president of the Association for Surgical Education, editor-in-chief of the Global Surgical Education Journal, and a member of the ACS Academy of Master Surgeon Educators. Now, you may have a better understanding why the education culture at IU is so unique. We look forward to meeting you and have you join this exceptional education team. Good morning. I am Mimi Sapa, a general thoracic surgeon and vice chair of Justice, Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion. IUSM, the Department of Surgery, stands behind the three pillars of diversity. Through diverse representation, we aim to create an inclusive work environment, which will then serve as a framework for surgic education and cultural competence. Our initiatives and efforts are not only at the trainee and faculty level, but also focuses on our physician extenders, our admin staff, and of course, most importantly, our patients. Our initiatives are focused on recruitment, mentorship, and retention. Hey, I'm Jackson. I'm a third year resident, uh, currently my first year of research. Um, DEI to me at IU means both like talking the talk and also walking the walk. So it's really nice when institutions can show their support um, nominally um, or in, with symbolism. For instance, our program director will put up a pride flag during Pride Month at his house, which is pretty significant. Um, but also walking the walk, for instance, being like an institutional member of SBAS and AWS and the Society of um, Out Surgeons and Allies and also having the institution fund our resident efforts to improve education um, in DEI curriculum. Hi, my name is Jasmine. I'm a PGY4 general surgery resident here at IU. Something that is a passion for me is diversity recruitment. When I was in medical school, I was a part of the SNMA and I wanted to continue being part of that organization as a resident. I have felt extremely supported by these department in going to SNMA conferences and recruiting. And something that came as even more of a surprise to me is I got support for this from the entire IU GME. So last year we were one of the largest uh, institutions to be at the Student National Medical Association Conference recruiting diverse residents for all of our programs. So it's not just IU surgery, but IU as a whole really supports the mission for DI and is doing the work. Hi, I'm Signe. I'm a fourth year general surgery resident, currently in my second year of research. Uh, to me, IU has an incredible parental leave policy and the support really comes from the co-residents. Um, being able to support your co-residents having a child or their spouse having a child uh, means so much uh, in terms of having a life outside of residency. Uh, Hi everyone, I'm Shanur Ahmad and I'm a general surgery resident and current research fellow in the Division of Plastic Surgery at Indiana University. I've had the pleasure of serving on our resident DEI committee. And to me, DEI means the opportunity to engage with colleagues and mentors to participate in activities that facilitate awareness of social disparities of patients in clinical and surgical care. IU Department of Surgery has particularly supported resident DEI initiatives by not only facilitating funding through our prime grant, uh, but also has allowed residents an opportunity to highlight key patient surgical disparities through our surgery uh, morbidity mortality disparity conference. Overall, I think uh, the support of the Department of Surgery has helped to trailblaze pathways for efforts in DEI and will greatly assist uh, skill building of this important initiative. Hi, my name is Krishna and I'm a PGY4 in my second year of research. And one thing that I want to highlight that the resident DEI committee has done is we've received funding from the university and support from our department to really create a disparities education curriculum from the ground up. Um, starting with our medical students, um, we've published a curriculum that we've instituted in our clerkship that's been well received and well liked and we're really working on not only training future surgeons in identifying and mitigating health disparities in surgery but also future doctors that are going to take care of surgical patients and that's not only incredibly important but incredibly inspiring to be involved in. More about all of this throughout the interview session but DEI permeates through all domains of our department. With regards to didactics the residents host quarterly health disparities morbidity and mortality conference which they also coordinate with a specific health disparities topic for resident education hour which takes place thereafter. We are deliberate to have diverse representation in our ground rounds visiting professors and specifically host a DEI visiting professor annually. 
For research, our department is the home of SOQIC, the Surgical Outcomes and Quality Improvement Center, which has a huge emphasis on health disparities research. IUSM is also affiliated with the Regan Streep Institute, whose president is Rachel Patzer, a well-renowned epidemiologist and health services researcher who is also housed in our department. So there'll be plenty of research opportunities and co collaborations there. We are also affiliated with CTSI, the Clinical and Translational Sciences Institute. And of course, IUSM has a longstanding history in global health surgery in AMPATH, which stands for the Academic Model for Providing Access to Healthcare, whereupon we have an ACGME approved rotation in Eldoret, Kenya, and it's also possible to spend your two years in research in global health surgery and acquiring a certificate in global health medicine. And with that, I hope to have provided you with an overview of the DEI efforts in our department. Thank you. Hello, and welcome to the Indiana University School of Medicine and the Department of Surgery. We're thrilled you're interested in our program and hope that this video shares some information with you regarding some great research opportunities we have for you on our campus. My name is Troy Markle and I'm a pediatric surgeon at Riley Hospital and serve as the Vice Chair for Research for the Department of Surgery. After their second clinical year, residents have the opportunity to take two years of dedicated academic development time to pursue basic science, education, health outcomes, or global health research. There are approximately 40 faculty members with protected time and dedicated research funding to pursue basic science and clinical outcomes research, and these practices are done in over 12,000 square feet of space. We are grateful to see steady increases in extramural funding over the last several years, with fiscal year 2023 bringing in just over $17 million of support. We also placed 29th on the Blue Ridge rankings of Departments of Surgery for funding and aim to be in the top 20 within the next five years. Our basic science faculty use a variety of state-of-the-art techniques and facilities to study a number of diseases that plague our patients, including myocardial infarction, traumatic injury, aortic aneurysm, and necrotizing enterocolitis. Departmental investigators have the opportunity to collaborate with a number of cores on the campus, including flow cytometry, biological microscopy, small animal ultrasound, in vivo therapeutics, and medical genomics. These cores allow investigators to participate in advanced techniques for in-depth cellular and tissue analysis. The Indiana CTSI is an NIH-funded statewide research partnership between Indiana University, Notre Dame, Purdue, and the Regan Streep Institute, and is designed to bring together Indiana's brightest minds to solve the state's most pressing health challenges. IU is a hub of collaborative work with local industry and partners. Whether investigator-initiated or industry-sponsored trials, our surgical teams work closely with local and national device and drug companies to trial cutting-edge devices and medications. Multiple clinical research centers exist within our medical campus so that patients can be thoroughly evaluated and treated while they participate in these trials. These CRCs are attached to basic lab and radiographic facilities so that patients do not incur any financial burden for participating in these trials. The IU Department of Surgery is a premier center for surgical education and education-based research. Started by former chair, Dr. Gary Dunnington, over a decade ago, our education research team takes advantage of state-of-the-art surgical skills labs and simulation centers to design and evaluate curriculums, provide and study proper feedback techniques, and prepare residents with authentic simulation practices to ensure that they are competent for clinical practice. During their two-year dedicated academic development time, residents have the opportunity to pursue a number of different master's degrees that are financially supported by the Department of Surgery.
IU has partnered with Moi Teaching and Referral Hospital in Eldoret, Kenya, so that residents have opportunities to pursue clinical rotations there. Residents can also pursue a master's degree in public health with an emphasis on global health and partner with faculty in Kenya to pursue global health research during their academic development time. In 2022, Dr. Carl Willamore joined our department as the new chair of surgery. As such, he relocated the Surgical Outcomes and Quality Improvement Center, which he founded in 2011, from Northwestern to IU. So quick, as it is termed, is a renowned collaborative health services, outcomes, health policy, and quality and safety research enterprise of more than 60 faculty, fellows, and staff. This new center at the IU School of Medicine will partner with Dr. Rachel Patzer at the Regan Street Institute and seeks to be the leading surgical outcomes research center in the country. The new SoQuick lab space is located on the fourth floor of Emerson Hall and is scheduled to open in only a few short weeks. It is designed with collaboration at its epicenter. SoQuick faculty will have offices along the periphery of the space and analysts and research residents will have shared space in the center. Plenty of conference space and common areas are present so residents and staff can share ideas and collaborate daily. We hope you have enjoyed this brief tour of the research opportunities that await you here at the IU School of Medicine and the Department of Surgery. We look forward to meeting you.